I think that there's, <laughs> I think there's, that's okay. I think there's a bunch in here that's really relevant to Mackay as well. Um, but I guess always um, pretext it by saying that, you know, there'll probably be moments where you might think, oh, that's not so relevant or that is relevant or that's not as easy here as it is there. So, um, you know, there's, there's lots of different scenarios. Um, but otherwise, I'm just going to jump in so um, uh, and tell you what we've been up to. Um, so I, I guess I always start by saying that there is a context um, to uh, CAFNEC being able to do this in that our management committee has invested in training our staff in community organising. Um, and that includes one of our board members, um, myself, and also one of, and our community organiser who have done um, training with um, Australian Progress and um, the Community Organising Fellowship and a bunch of online stuff as well. So, um, you know, we're not just making it up and we also, uh, you know, had to like get some training to figure out how to do this. Um, but also a bunch of that training is quite I guess, city centric. Um, and you have to adapt that information to, um, you know, be relevant for regional communities. Um, and also uh, conservation councils are their own unique beast or like regional conservation groups like Mackay and like Kathnek. We play many more roles than a normal, you know, um, group would in that we, um, we have a lot of issues in the regions and there's often no one else doing anything. And so trying to address them all um, comes at a great task. So the first question in relation to that, that we asked ourselves are, who are, who are CAFNEC's people? Who are we organizing and who are we helping to find power and um, you know, work with power? Um, so we have our individual members, um, we have our member groups and we have our general community. So our individual members are, um, you know, people who might sign up to CAFNIC as individuals or volunteer with us. Um, then we have member groups who are other smaller groups. Um, they might be land care groups or, you know, some groups, uh, some of the other unique climate groups like Australian Parents for Climate Actions and such, you know, uh, members um, and then we have our general community members, which are anybody and everybody who approaches CAFNIC about environmental issues from my drains blocked to someone's building a dam on the river that, you know, is on my country. And so there's a really broad range of issues that people come to us about. Um, and, you know, as an environment centre, we also have a responsibility to help those people when they approach us. Um, so to make sure that we can help all of these people, um, we de developed a theory, what's called a theory of change about how we can help these different groups of people and how we can uniquely um, assist them. So a theory of change basically looks at who are we organizing, what are we pursuing with them to achieve what, and like, what are we gonna do? So you know, with, which, with each group, we really took a focus around at an organisational level, like what's our vision, um, you know, our organising program, what are we trying to achieve? And then like, what do each of those, how are each of those different groups unique? Um, and how can we best service them? That sounds like pretty, you know, gross and capitalistic in some ways, but like, how can we best help those groups achieve their goals? Um, you know, because I think sometimes we think about it in how can we get those people to help achieve CAFNEC's goals, but a lot of CAFNEC's mission and vision is entrenched in like what all these different people are trying to achieve. So it's, it's a bit of both of those things. So from there, we decided to start with a core trainer program because what we recognized is that we have a small number of staff members um, as you know, Mackay Conservation Group does and a huge number of members and supporters. And so to be able to you know, um, support all of them, we needed to like scale up our skilled people who could help them. And so we traded, created a core trainer program, which was like uh, a recruitment process. So you had to apply and it, it's a two year volunteer contract. Um, and that we would train um, these people in the community organizing that um, we were trained in that I mentioned at the start so that those people um, could help, you know, those three different areas of work that we'd identified. Um, 
and for you know those of you who might not have interacted with community organizing as a concept it's kind of the difference between community engagement and community organizing as community engagement is really about engaging people you know with the work that you're doing and helping them to be a part of it and community organizing is all about building um in leadership in your members and building skills and capacity in your members so that they can drive work um, that aligns with the organization and then helps us all achieve our collective goals um, and so that's really what we trained these um, eight you know uh, core volunteers in and you know it was really exciting because we actually had a lot of really skilled people excited people um, uh, apply we had 14 applications um, and you know meant we got eight really kick-ass um, people who are you know just like amazing leaders in our movement already and who want to give their time to Catholic. Um, here they are they're beautiful faces um, so as far north as Cooktown and as far south as Mission Beach so we really try to and uh, reach out to some of our more regional areas around Cairns and not be too Cairns centric I'm really passionate about not being the southeast Queensland or far north Queensland um, so a real age different in ages and um, you know uh, unfortunately uh, didn't have as many men apply as we like uh, like but you know we're um, trying to encourage more um, man folk to join us uh, or you know non-binary folk but it just um you know that diversity is really important in in that leadership as well so our first stream is our caffeinate volunteers and so what we're doing with our individual volunteers is um helping them to take part in the campaigns that caffeinate has identified as our key priorities at the moment they um the climate action now campaign and our spectacled flying fox campaign and so we're developing leaders there we're training them in conversations um you know around climate we've got a massive door knocking campaign um and we're trying to step up leaders to you know drive that campaign a bit themselves um and you know we've got uh regular people going out door knocking i think we've got about 35 people who are going out door knocking fortnightly for the next year they that's what they've said they will do so uh that's pretty exciting uh and you know there's a lot of other stuff happening there as well um with our member groups what we've decided to do is to to our core two of our core trainers will work with two member groups each year to help them understand how they can attract more people to their work and help you know really define what they're trying to achieve um i'm sure so many of you have worked in communities where you see the same people at all the different like volunteer organizations because like you know there's actually a lot of us just put our time into lots of organizations and a lot of these small groups um one of the challenges they face is like doing the work first getting people to help do the work so that there's more people doing the work um and that can be a real challenge so um instead of having a you know solid uh training program the first thing we do is like or a static training program the first thing we do is like an interview process with them where we figure out you know what are the key challenges of the group what do they want to achieve and then design a curriculum that's really specific to that group's needs and help them understand how they can scale up their own membership and really help them to achieve their work and inevitably in our member groups achieving their goals Catholic vision can be achieved because those member groups have a shared vision with us um oh, what happened now oh no i pressed a button <laughs> um <laughs> so um well that's a different presentation anyway so our last um uh, I just like stole these slides from a different presentation I did my apologies um the last stream we have is what our is called our rapid response team so you know like I said we have a lot of people approaching us um to run campaigns on the environment and like there are so many issues in far north Queensland and CAFNEC is just not doesn't have the capacity to work on all of them but also all of those issues are actually really important for the most part and um, it's really essential that someone does something about it um, so instead of just saying sorry we can't help we um, say these are the ways we can help one of the most essential ways we can help you is training you in how to campaign so that you can run this yourself um, and that's what some of that what two of our core trainers do is um, teach people how to run campaigns where we don't have the capacity to help run a campaign on an important environmental issue so um, that looks like our core trainers 
um, training our volunteers on our campaigns, um, two trainers training our member groups on the work that they want to do, um, and a rapid response team helping the general community with the issues that they have. Um, so what are the results of this work? Um, there's literally never any space in our environment centre because there's so many people coming and doing amazing work and having meetings. And uh, it gives me so much inspiration and hope to see so many different ages and types of people there. Um, we're starting to reach um, Cooktown and um, Mission Beach and Atherton and those places a bit more, but particularly Cooktown is exciting because um, that's really far from Cairns and a really unique community. Um, and we've got, you know, um, some really new and fresh faces coming in there. Um, how, where do I see it going? I just want to see all of these places, you know, across far north Queensland having core trainers where I can help you know, where we can help develop leadership, um, where we don't have the capacity to be on the ground. Um, and, you know, that we can start building coalitions across all these areas. Um, and the thing that's exciting about that is, you know, like that, that, that really builds, uh, I think people can see remote Queensland in a way they might not have before. Um, but also Queen, far north Queensland is bigger than Victoria, I realised not long ago. So we, we literally just can't do our job unless we scale in this way. Um, so that's what we've been doing. It's been going well. I've learned a lot and happy to take any questions. Back to you, Peter. <laughs> Muted. Yes. Okay. Uh, yeah. So I don't know. I found that extremely exciting. I think it it's uh, it's like something that environment groups really need to do to regenerate and uh, you know encourage more people to take part in the work that we do. So I'm just you know I'm really keen to hear from anyone else who's here on the on the meeting to you know with any questions for Lucy. Okay. Uh, so we've got one in the room here, so from Brooke. So I'll just switch the camera around so that you can see her. So Brooke, do you want to just step up and yeah, so uh, people can see it? Um, yes. Um, you talk about door knocking every weekend. Um, what sort of door knocking is it? Is it to recruit members for your group, or are there specific projects you're working on? Hey, good question. Um, so that's our climate campaign, and we're we've called it the our way of, our climate our way of life campaign and um what we're really trying to do um is you know in the past the door knocking we've done on climate change has been focused around elections and you know shifting votes to you know influence climate action but um you know have found that that really uh makes it kind of like a political issue rather than a social justice issue and an environmental justice issue so we've decided to um try and like do two years of door knocking at a minimum on climate change, where we actually just go out and listen to people about climate change and get an understanding of, you know, how they're being impacted and like what their um, issues are. And then we get them together to do a climate safe visioning session in their suburb after two months of door knocking in that suburb. So, and we also get the um, climate action now signs up on fences and around in the community. So we can start creating that visual demand for climate action. And um, here in Cairns, yeah, we have, you know, a lot, like we don't have extraction up here, for, like fossil fuel extraction. Um, we have mining, but different. Uh, and, you know, everyone's job depends on the environment. So it's it's pretty easy to talk about the impacts of climate change. So it's not so much about recruiting volunteers, but we do recruit volunteers on the doors to be a part of their campaign because, um, yeah, there's a lot of people who are ready to get active. Uh, anyone else with a question? So um, I've got a question, uh, Lucy. Could you talk to us a, a little bit more about the recruitment process? So how did you um, how did how did you go about finding those people that you know those really kick-ass people that you said you found in there? Yeah, so um, we took a real sort of employment kind of attitude towards it in that we advertised on ethical jobs um, and we also put it out on employment Facebook pages and we sent specific emails to people who we had seen um, demonstrating leadership in our community already. 
and invited them to apply as well. Um, we recruit, we did the advertising for, um, you know, for the positions, I think for three weeks and we interviewed people um, after that. Um, and then based on those interviews, offered people the positions. Um, I think the most successful part was the pre-work we did in talking about the vision that we wanted to create and, you know, saying to people that, um, th you know, that we really need to do something about climate change. You're already a leader and this is how you can help um, scale up action in, in our community. And, yeah, I, th I think everyone can get excited about that. But the other thing is that the really, the thing that I said I think that often convinced people was, you know, community organising is changing the way we're doing um, advocacy in Australia. But at this point in time, to get trained in community organising, you have to go to Brisbane or Melbourne or Sydney, and um, that is a real, like, sort of class social justice issue, regionality issue, and what we can do is fundamentally change what's possible for our region by providing that training here, and you can be a part of making that change for our region. And I think people get excited about that as well. Thanks. Yeah, no, that's true. And it's it, like everyone is isolated. It costs us a lot more to do things like that. I see that you're unmuted, Faye, uh, up there in yes. the Sundays. Do, do you have um, a question to ask? Yes, Peter, thank you very much. Uh, Lucy, very interesting. Thank you. Uh, these positions, are they paid positions? And if so, how do you get the funding for them? They're not paid positions. No, not. so oh. we don't need we don't need any funding. Right. Um, yeah. Yeah, I, yeah, I think the thing I will say about that is I reflect on a book I read, um, which I don't all agree with all, all of it, but it was written by Becky Bond um, after she organised uh, the Ber uh, Bernie Sanders campaign the first time round. And she said, people are, will, are tired of small solutions for big problems and are ready to make big commitments for big problems. And that's what we're finding is the case, yeah. Thank you very much, good. All right. Um, yeah, Lucy has uh, another commitment, so we might let you go, but I'm sure there will be other questions people have. Um, can we get a copy of your presentation at some point, Lucy? Or uh, yeah, yeah. So, well, I'll talk to you about some questions and we'll start to work on implementing this here. Yeah, and, you know, like I am all about it copying, pasting and, you know, using resources and not trying to um, reinvent the wheel. So happy to share any resources that is useful. And also like, um, you know, Peter, if anyone has any questions, feel free to give them my number. Happy to have a yarn if, um, you know, if that's useful to folk. So, and thanks for giving me the chance to chat. I love organizing and I hope you all get excited about it too. <laughs> <laughs> Good on you, Lucy. Yeah. All right. Thank you. See you later, everyone.